glad to be here. I am a web developer for a small agency in Atlanta, and we do we build websites, um, WordPress stuff. Um, we've built, see, we've been around for five years, and we've built, we host 150 sites. We've built a couple hundred, probably probably a little, maybe a little more. Um, but every single site we built, you know, we need a contact form. Um, so how many of you guys um, use Contact Form 7? Okay, uh, Ninja Forms. Okay, and then Gravity Forms. Okay, that's about what I expected. So um, let me tell you that it's been very difficult to compare these because um, it's really hard to compare compare something that's totally free uh, compared to something that costs money. Um, and even the ones where they have a business model, um, it's it's hard because the packages aren't identical. Um, a lot of it depends on your needs. Um, first thing, um, I did this talk at a meetup in Atlanta, and it wound up uh, going kind of side sidelined by um, people aren't getting my email when they fill out the contact form, and that's a could be a totally different talk. Um, so if you guys are having that issue, um, there's a plugin, um, WP Mail SMTP, that works really well. Um, or you can use a plugin like uh, SendGrid, which is what we use for most of our clients. It's really expensive. It's a dollar a month for like a thousand emails. Um, so it's you know it's negligible. We don't pass anything along to the client because it's hard to split up a dollar against you know 100 clients. So um, then there's things like Mandrill, which is owned by um, Melcho. Um, so, so there are, I'm comparing these three. Um, Contact Form 7, um, it is free open source, um, but it does not have any add-ons that I could find. Go into their website. Um, it's simple, um, nothing, no uh, thrills, I guess. Um, Ninja Forms, um, it's free and open source. Uh, it has some paid uh, add-ons. Um, Gravity Forms is not free, but open source, which a lot of people use the words uh, free and open source kind of interchangeable, and they're not. Um, and it's really confusing. Um, basically, with uh, Gravity Forms, um, the source is, um, it's open source if you can get it type thing. Um, so it's, it's kind of strange. Um, Contact Form 7, um, it has been around, it, that's actually what I started off with um, in like 08, 09, uh, because that was the one that was out, um, and it works. There's a million active installs, it's been downloaded 28 million plus um, sites, um, and um, I mean it, it does send email. Um, and there is no business model, which is actually can be good um, as long as it's a product that's uh, easily supported. Um, but does anybody know who uh, Richard Stallman is? All right, we got one guy. <laughs> that that's the plugin he would be using. His logo used to be the Statue of Liberty holding the floppy disk. See, yeah, <laughs> it's all about open source. Uh, sorry. All right. Man, that jumped. All right. <laughs> the guy that wrote this plugin is a moron. So, oh wait, that was me. Okay, so um, let's look at Contact Form 7. I'm just gonna walk you through it. I honestly don't know how long this talk is gonna take, um, and I'm not gonna go into a ton of um, detail on these, but I just wanna show you guys the ones that are using Gravity Forms, what Contact Form 7 looks like, and vice versa. Um, so when you install Contact Form 7, it has this nice form. You can go and edit it. And this is really, I have no data to back this up, but I mean, I would guess half of the contact forms are basically this, someone's name, phone number, and email. And, and that works great. Um, but this is just kind of funny because it's not that easy for me, um, let's say I needed to add a text area, okay? It adds a number that means nothing to me, 
Um, but that looks like what I need. It has a little explanation here. If you want this variable, let's say they need, um, what's your problem? We call the text area, what's your problem? Um, you want that to show up in the email, you've got to make sure that you take this little, I'll use the word short code. I know it's not a short code. Um, but take that and put it in the email. So we hit insert tag. Oh. Not ideal. But we can take that. We can go down here and paste it. And, oh, we forgot to put it in P tags, you know, et cetera, et cetera, right? Um, then if we want that value, which is text area dash seven, 716 to show up in the email that is sent, you got to make sure you put it in here, et cetera, et cetera. It's, it's not, um, to me, ideal for, for most people. So, so contact form 7 is perfect for none of my clients. Um, and it might be great for, for you guys. I, I don't know. I have a um, developer friend that that's what he uses is contact form 7, and he had a form that was like 100 variables. And I just, I can't comprehend that. It's really time consuming. Um, but the issues with it are is that it sends email, which is great, but it does not capture the data in any way, form, or fashion. So. Um, if you, for some reason, your the, the email starts getting uh, flagged as spam, you've lost that data. There's no other way to get that. Um, and for clients, I can't get my clients to write content. I can't get them to use the WYSIWYG. Like I have a client that sends us a Word document with a picture in it, and they need it on their web page. You know, so if I'm asking them to build a form, that's going to be you know problematic. Um, Ninja Forms. Um, Ninja Forms is open source um, and it's in the WordPress repository. Um, it's been around for a lot longer than I thought. Um, but they have 200,000 active installs. Their business model is uh, free with some add ons. Um, the cool thing about them is that I've met those guys. You know, they, they are, they're not here in Boston. They were the one in it, they were in Atlanta this year and there were like six guys, they had some really nice swag, which I have four kids, and the swag, you know, keeps the kids pretty happy. Um, so, um, so let's look at their interface. And I always get these two confused: which forms, this one or this one? But it is this one. All right. All right, we go to build our first form. Um, this is kind of double safe, it's a little confusing for me. But let's say we need the person's first name. Looks good. We need their last name. Address, address, zip, email, phone, et cetera, et cetera. The page gets really long really fast. Um, this is one thing I think is kind of weird that that actually lists There we go. Um, all of the states uh, versus it being collapsed. I honestly think all of these should be collapsed. Um, but it's relatively simple. I don't have to sit there and move uh, text around or add P tags to make sure things are formatted. By the way, I'm not even going to show you the front end on this um, because to me it's not quite as important. I guarantee you it looks decent. Um, but it has a lot of to me, it's just a lot easier for someone to, to extend this if they needed to. Um, then we can hit save. All right. The form looks good. And it added a submit button, which is important. Um, I think it's kind of weird that's, a, that's even an option to not have one. Um, we go to email and actions. This is where, um, this is a little frustrating for me because um, if I send this over to a client and they build a form, the information is going to be captured and they're not going to get an email. 
Um, it seems like to me that I would wanted to actually send an email. So we figure out who it's going to and from and all that stuff. If you want it to go to yourself or the sysadmin, sys et cetera, et cetera, you have to add, add that feature. Uh, or not feature, you have to add that functionality. Um, but overall, it's pretty simple and it gets it done. So actually, I will show. I mean, it works. All right, so it's easy to, um, for, for me as a developer, it's easy to implement um, and it has what I need. Um, for the clients, they can, they can use it, they can get something built um, if they need to extend it. We have a client that has added, can't even think of how many, sorry, my, my team over here, so I'm sitting here looking. We, we have a client that's built, you know, 20 forms um, and they're, you know, they're happy. Um, nonetheless, um, all right, so it's perfect for developers um, and for some of our clients, um, it's, it's free. This, this functionality is um, totally free. So when I, when I compare that functionality to Contact Form 7, um, to me it's, it's kind of a, a no-brainer. If your budget's zero, zero dollars um, with Ninja Forms, and to me it kind of it wins, um, and the interface is average. Um, Gravity Forms, um, it's open source but paid. Um, it gets updates just like every other um, plugin that's in the repository. I'm sure you guys have run into plugins that are, you pay for it and it's a pain to update because you have to log in, download it, install it, et cetera, et cetera. Gravity Forms has a system where it does update just like everything else. Um, it's been around. Um, for a very long time. Um, I can't look at the repository to see when it came out. Um, and I know some people are using it. Um, once again, it's not in the repository, so we have no idea if it's a, you know, we, they have a support team of 10 people and hundreds of thousands of people are using it or not. Um, all right, so let's look at Gravity Forms. Um, I'm going to add a new one. Okay, this is kind of cool. Um, it has a nice little graphic that's there walking you through it, explaining how it all works. Um, so, I like the fact that that the, um, the interface is over here on the right because I expect in WordPress a lot of things on the right, like the update button, et cetera, et cetera. Um, there's advanced fields, so we can do the exact same thing. Name, to me that makes more sense than what NinjaForm does versus a box that you have to actually look at for a minute. Um, this is, I mean, pretty straightforward. Address. All of that information in one button, you know, um, and everything is movable. I mean, just like Ninja Forms, I mean, you can drag and drop, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, <coughs> bear with me. Okay. You can hit update. There's no submit button you have to add. Uh, so if a client accidentally removes the submit button on Contact Form 7 or on uh, Ninja Forms, you don't have to worry about that. Um, I just, I've never seen a form that doesn't need some kind of submission. All right, it's perfect for my mom, because my mom could add a form if she needed to. Um, it's perfect, I think, for almost all of our clients. We have every once in a while, if they need some kind of extra functionality or it's con confusing, um, you know, they'll ask us questions. It's great for people like me. Um, it saves the data um, as it should. You can export the information like as a, an Excel spreadsheet or CSV, I think. Um, and same with Ninja Forms. Um, but I really like the, uh, the interface. I think the interface is, is the best of the three. Um, and I know there's a couple other like 
formidable um, and a couple other ones that are out there that I just don't see any getting any traction, so I'm not even covering those. Um, the only problem is, is that um, I never would have used Gravity Forms if I didn't have a friend that said, oh yeah, you need to use this. Um, you know, I know you can download a 30-day trial, um, but no one likes to do that. When you're looking for a plugin, chances are you're on the back end of WordPress and you're typing in forms or something like that. And so Gravity Forms won't show up in there. So um, the um, at the beginning, I said it's hard to compare, and it really is hard to compare these. So mostly, kind of what what I can compare um, is Gravity Forms, which has um, a license, 200 bucks a year, and it's all it's subscription based. Um, you know, so if you stop paying. You know, for it, you no longer get the updates. You can still keep using, you know, Gravity Forms and in Ninja Forms, et cetera, et cetera. It's not going to stop working. It's just you're going to open yourself up for hacking. I'm sure you guys have seen the security vulnerabilities in the past, I don't know, four or five months with Gravity Forms. Um, you know, keep your your up your plugins up to date. Um, uh, one of the cool things for us is that, like I said, we have a hundred. 150 sites or so, and we install um, Gravity Forms on all of them, um, and so it cost us, you know, a couple bucks a year, you know, um, for for all of the sites. Um, so, question is for you guys, you know, do you guys manage a site? You know, 200 bucks a year might be expensive, um, you know, to keep get all the plugins and everything. Um, you know, if you're a small agency, you probably can shell out a couple hundred bucks. Uh, if you're a large agency, it's kind of a no-brainer. Um, or you might write your own little custom um, plug-in for that stuff. So, hey, I just said that. All right. Um, Gravity Forms has three levels. Uh, a personal um, level for 40 bucks a year. Um, the business would be business meaning um, one company uh, for 100, and then the developer license, which is what I would be purchasing, being you know maintaining a lot of sites, um, which is not that bad of a deal. Um, Ninja Forms. Um, this is where this is where it gets hard because um, if you just need, let's say your client just needs to send email, Ninja Forms will, will work great. Um, and then if you need to extend it in some way, form, or fashion, it could be 18 bucks. Um, that could be all, all you need. Um, but there's, there's a couple different levels. Um, all right, so what, what is your plan to? Um, do you guys build a site and hand it over to them and then they're on their own and you don't maintain it um, and you don't, um, you never really talk to them again? Um, your option might be to purchase the plugin, not have the subscription-based uh, thing. Just purchase it once and say, hey, and you guys are going to get an email in about a year saying it needs to be renewed. Um, if that's if that's your business model and that works for you, then you know just just get the lowest uh, buy small. What is it? The most viable you know product that they can have and just you know ship it off to them. Um, so, who's winning at this point? Ninja Forms is, in my opinion, because of the fact that the um, you haven't had to shell out any money um, to see the functionality that was there. Um, what if you want to extend it? Um, contact Form 7. Oh, yeah. You can extend that one. Um, there's nothing else to extend. Um, with Ninja Forms, um, you can extend it. I'm going to hit a couple of these in here because some of these are really important to me, like conditional logic. Um, so you guys have a form, and they say, um, like, let's say you want your um, T-shirt. They ask, let's say it's for T-shirts. You have a uh, male or female. You click on that, and it does uh, conditional logic where you can make it say, okay, then what size? Um, that's not built in in Ninja Forms, um, but it is uh, in the developer's license. Um, file uploads. What was the other one that I thought was really cool? Um, oh, this one. Lay layout and styles. 
Um, how many of you guys style the forms? We've got a few. Okay. We normally um, we build things from scratch, uh, customize, you know, from you know from Photoshop to a custom theme, and we style every little aspect of it. Um, and honestly, it would be kind of cool to be able to use um, the layout and styles uh, functionality. Um, I'll actually cover that in just one second. Um, with Gravity Forms, um, the developer license has um, a lot of these, these things built in. Um, one of them, like the conditional logic, is built in in Gravity Forms, um, but it has it's very extendable. Um, the Ninja Forms that is um, their biggest package that is $4.99 a year. It has 45 add-ons um, that does everything you possibly would ever need. Um, we, as, a, as an agency, we would be fine with the lower level um, for the, the gravity, gravity Forms or Ninja Forms, the $300 one. Um, managing the plugins, just making sure I'm not running out of time. So. I think I'm doing okay. Um, managing the plugins is actually, now I see why it's doing that. Give me one second. Tricky. Um, let me show you in Gravity Forms how you update, um, not update, add-ons. So with Gravity Forms, if you need to integrate with, I don't know, Emma, <clears throat> I have no idea what that is, but you hit a button, then you activate it, and then you're golden. Um, if you have a uh, subscription with Ninja Forms, it's actually a little more complex. You have to go to ninjaforms.com, log in, download the zip file, upload the zip file, then you have to go and copy and, copy and paste the license, and then go into, um, somewhere in here, uh, you drop your, your licenses in here. And if you're using six add-ons, then you have to go and do it six times. Or if you manage sites, you know, you could wind up spending a little time doing that. It might not be that big of a deal. Um, it's just a little frustrating to me um, compared to what you can do with Gravity Forms. Cover that. All right, so who wins in my opinion? Um, if you just need a contact form, uh, Ninja Forms is great. Um, if you just need one module, Ninja Forms. If you need multiple modules in Gravity Forms, and this is a, kind of a key piece, Gravity Forms has what you need, then that, go with Gravity Forms. If you need something that Ninja Forms does not have, obviously don't use it. I'm, I'm sorry, did I say Gravity Forms? If Gravity Forms says it has it, go with Ninja Forms because you can do module by module. So if you have a client, um, and they've been had just a plain old boring contact form for two years, and then all of a sudden they need to do some kind of PayPal integration or something like that. Um, it's easy to buy just that one little module. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, the, the big unknown um, is kind of, that gets kind of confusing um, because um, we have 100 sites. Um, and if we ever need to extend it, um, Clients can ask for the weirdest API integrations, um, you know, and that could be a, uh, a reason to use Ninja Forms versus Gravity Forms. So, um, overall, I think Ninja Form wins uh, for these, these reasons. I um, feel like I flew through that. Um, anyway, that's, that is my take on it. Um, I've been, we've been using those, the Contact Form 7 and Ninja Forms and Gravity Forms for a long time. Um, and that's, that's my take. So does anybody have any questions?
Okay, I'm going to start kind of kind of fan this way. So. Uh, Encrypted? Um, in what way? Do you mean besides SSL integration? Or? Right. I have never, I'm trying to think, I don't think I've ever had to deal with that. I mean, to me, at that point, if you're trying to deal with HIPAA, don't send the email. Make sure you have SSL on there. Um, but you still have the security issue of having the data sitting in WordPress, which that makes me slightly nervous. So, but like credit card information and stuff, you know, never store that in there, but. I did find one graphic plugin that does uh, UCP. It does, I'm sorry? Uh, Gravity Forms uh, has a bunch of extensions you can find. Mm -hmm. There's at least one that does the UCP. Oh, okay, that's cool. Yeah. All right, does it, does it stay up to date or do you know? Mentioned the uh, that the uh, Home Seven only sends an email, doesn't save it, it, the, it, the data into a database. But and, and I assume that Gravity Forms and Ninja does save it into. Yeah. So um, Gravity Forms. Um, you know, I don't even know if I. <laughs> I could fill out a form if you wanted. Um, I believe you. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it saves it, um, then you can go to, um, where is it, uh, import and export. Um, you can export the entries, you select which form you want it, and it, it's in a uh, CSV, not a, an Excel file or anything like that, but it, you can import it. Okay, so just as a follow-on, what about using one of the marketing automation tools rather than these forms, so things like Constant Contact plugins or Marketo or HubSpot or plugins. Integrating well. the two? Yeah. Okay, yeah, you can go into, um, in Ninja Forms has, has the same type of um, integration capabilities. You know what? That's right. Um, there is a free one uh, to integrate uh, contact, um, constant contact. Um, is it? I don't know. use Aweber. Okay. I'll I'll show you Aweber. I mean, you just you install it, hit activate, and you go over here. Um, You just tell it basically, um, you match up, you create the form and then you match up and say, hey, this this uh, email address needs to go, it goes submitted into um, Aweber. Um, so it, it does integrate though with MailChimp and other, you know, things like Constant Contact, so. Does Ninja um, That's a good question. I, I think they do because they have, I don't, I don't think there is a single module that, um, major module that uh, Ninja Forms doesn't try to uh, compete with. That, that's one of the things I do like about, I, I'm glad that both of those exist, Ninja Forms and Gravity Forms, because um, I feel like last year there weren't that many for Gravity Forms, um, and then I, I went into one of the sites and there were, a ton more, and I think it's because Ninja Forms and Gravity Forms are, they're competing. Um, competition is normally a, a good thing for us, so. I can block spam. How do you block spam? So that's where um, using a plugin like uh, SendGrid, um, which I forget what the URL was for it. Um, so, actually blocking spam, I guess, is different than sending and making sure it makes it to, I have no idea. Use, um, use Google, uh, 
Gmail or uh, Google Business for blocking it to sending it to making making sure that it gets there though um, you will probably want to use something like SendGrid um, and I would assume they do some kind of spam filtering but I can't I don't I don't know we I, I don't know if we've had a client complain about spam because if there is a spam issue you can go in and just add a um, captcha uh, to the to the forms so right behind you. Heard the beginning of that. Can someone repeat? <laughs> or, yes. Yeah. Do any of these forms have a option where the person filling out the form has to enter their birthday before they can submit their information? Their birthday? Yeah, so you, can you can do that, that through uh, conditional logic. Um, you know, if um, if the value isn't this, you know, then then you would. Once they put that in, then you can make the rest of the form display. Um, I mean, you could, if you know how to hack it and change the HTML, you could easily get by that. But yeah, um, wait, wait until the mic gets there. But um, right behind, way back there. I can't hear you. I'm sorry. Your thoughts on Google Forms? Google Forms, I mean, I, I like to keep everything integrated um, within WordPress. Um, I've never used it. I have seen, um, actually, I think WordCamp Atlanta, uh, for some reason, I think they used Google Forms uh, for submissions, or so, some WordCamp did, which I thought was really odd, but I, I, I'm not super familiar with it, so I know it exists. That's about it. Anybody else? There's one. All right. Oh. Oh wait. I'm sorry. I didn't see. Right there. Let's do that one. In the that's that's fine. There was. There's one over there. And then here. Thank you. Do any of these forms have add-ins that will enable progressive profiling, or is that when I really need to look at an email marketing solution? What type of profiling? Progressive profiling. So if you've come and you filled out a form once and you've given me your first name, last name, and email, the next time you come back, I can ask your state or so that I can start to understand who you are without asking you for the same information or hitting you with seven fields to fill out at once. Okay, that was my, my business partner. He just he just answered the question and that's a, that's a no. Um, so I'm sure there's some kind of service that wants to take your money to do that, to do that, but yeah, not not that I'm aware of. Okay. So. I, I'm not surprised. I just wanted to ask. Right. I was hoping. Right. Understood. So. Uh, for example, forms. A lot of the page sites have a discrete, free uh, fields that. Do any of these work with horizontal forms on a front page? Might have three fields that could be different. Horizontal forms. So you're saying instead of item, 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 you could put them to the left and right. That would all be done through CSS. Um, Gravity Forms has some really obscure and hard to find documentation on how to do that. But um, Ninja Forms and um, Gravity Forms, you can apply a specific class to each element. Um, and with uh, Gravity Forms at least, you can do, um, Let's say you have uh, three uh, input fields. You could do one, you apply a class called one third, one third, and one third, and then they would um, not stack, they'd be side by side. Um, so it's possible, and I'm about 99% sure Ninja Forms has, has the same uh, capabilities. The good thing about Ninja Forms is you can download it and try it, so. All right, the way of Hi, um, I just think it's uh, important to mention that, uh, like for instance, on the prices on Gravity Forms, mm -hmm. for the next year, they're 50% of that. That's that's so true, I did. It's a pretty fair deal. Yeah, so you pay 200 the first year, and then your renewal is half half that. And uh, Ninja Forms' is first, first year is 300 or 500, and then it's 
uh, 60% off and 60% off. Um, and that's not just through one of the packages, that's every mod module. So if you get one module and then you have to renew it, it's going to be 60% um, than what you paid originally. Yeah, yeah. So, that's a good deal. Yeah, I, honestly, I think um, Gravity Forms, they tried to get you at 150 uh, for a renewal or something, and then, or maybe, maybe it was, maybe it's not common, but one year it was 150, and then I just, I waited until the last day, um, and then it was 50. Or, or so, I mean, it was something, it was something ridiculous, so it's, you can get a, a good deal occasionally. Yeah, so. I think that was a while back. Okay. That, out. that was, that was nice, long. though. And they could change it again without asking. That's it. Cool. Thank you. Oh, and by the way, I'll be um, in uh, whatever uh, the happiness bar um, after this for probably the rest of the day until the uh, closing. So, thanks.